the essays I read, written <coughs> by a woman about Molly Bloom, pointed out that so many um, chapters and essays have been written by men about Molly Bloom. Mm -hmm. Written by men because of, uh, through the hundred years uh, more of it. But, um, and th that she felt it was really important for a woman to write about Mo Molly Bloom because there were some aspects that you just couldn't dissect if you weren't a woman. Mm -hmm. But but Joyce but Joyce himself did. reveals her in her fullness, yeah. you know, so well, he, I'm wondering she if, if he had, like, um, because he was, it sounded like what you're saying is he, he was really into a precise memory. You know, when he was like away from Ireland, I, I think I remember him writing to say, how many steps is it between this building and that building? Like oh, he wanted to get yeah. it exact. And so there's this weird thing of exactness, yet he's not there. Uh -huh. and, it's, and it's about his past. And so once he has that down, that somehow that becomes like a, the ground, literally. The, the, past, the grounding. The grounding that then the imagination can then I flow into that. places, you know? But if, if, but if he wasn't exact in his memory, he wouldn't be as fluid in his imagination. And it would be all like felt. Right? And of course, yeah. memory is not exact. Right, but he, he needed to, maybe he needed to feel exact. Yeah. You know, and that's like, a, like, so, like, you think, who cares if it's 32 steps or right. 34 yeah. steps? But, but for him, it mattered, yeah. and maybe it Probably was, it was the there. underpinning of everything else. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if this fits at all, but I, I saw this thing about the cuttlefish yesterday, and this is this amazing, most unbelievable oh, yes, creature yes. ever. I don't know about that. You know, that's, well, it, you should tell everyone what they do. Well, a cuttlefish is like an um, octopus, but they, okay, so a lot of them, uh, the species, um, are camouflaged. They can become anything that they're around. Ooh. You know, if they're on that rug, anything. they would be that blue rug with that texture, not just looking like that texture, but their skin could become that. Whoa. But then there's this one now, it isn't camouflaged, but is like fireworks. You know, like, you know, hyp hypnotize its prey, and it can do lights and everything. But they were saying something about, like, why is it so confident? Like, how, you know, because camouflage is about being skinny and trying to stay invisible. <coughs> Suddenly you have a cuttlefish that doesn't care if it's seen. And they found out that it's completely poisonous to be eaten, you know? Oh. And, and so I was just thinking about, like, now scientists were saying, you know, who knows what's what, but, but maybe the fact if you know something about yourself, then you can be something. So, like, if, if Joyce knew that that was exact, uh, yes, then he could fly. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, he just needed to have that feeling of exactness so that he could the have the license to. Yeah. I love it because if you knew you were poisonous, sometimes you know, in memory, I'm sorry. other species would know you're poisonous from experience. Right. Memory, memory changes your your emotions change over time and your, your emotions change, your memory of things. And there was a, a lot of books on memory at one point used the example of, how, of uh, John Dean, who was uh, the attorney for Nixon yeah. during the Watergate uh, uh, fiasco. And Dean was the one who went and testified in front of Congress uh, and said there's a cancer on the presidency and led to Nixon's resignation eventually. And then the Nixon tapes were released. And so it was a rare moment where you had a, a documented public record of a man giving public testimony and everyone said, what an ironclad memory he had and boy, he knew who was wearing what and who stood where and God, the, he's, the how could you not believe him? You know? And then the transcripts <laughs> of the tapes came out and he did have the basic thing right. They all were conspiring to cover up this crime. But he wasn't perfect. But he, well, yeah. not only wasn't he perfect, but he made himself look better, and he telescoped many meetings into one. And Nixon didn't <coughs> praise him the way he said in certain meetings. And but the but the essence of it, you know, the essence of it was true. But but in his mind, if, and in the minds of the listeners, if you can create that sense of exactitude. It, it creates a sense of confidence in believing the person, you know. And I think one of the things in Joyce's novel was uh, was uh, the the trickery of memory mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the characters, you know, the elusiveness of because yeah. we know we the old view was that there there's a file cabinet in our brain, and the little man or woman in the brain rifles through, and you go, oh yes, I remember the day we had the. Bloomsday meeting, you know, there were 700 people there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> In 50 years, that's, that's what right. you say. <laughs> so, but the modern understanding, there's no such 
process, you know. Well, have you guys heard of the anatomical form? No. In terms of, um, like, in terms of novels and literature, we all think of everything's a novel. That's this length. This is a novel. Mm -hmm. But there are other forms, like novel is one, a romance is one, um, and they all have different guidelines for what is good and bad, and it's genre. Well, acceptable defining. in there. Yeah. Genre. And so the anatomical form is something that goes outside the novel by incorporating reality, like this is a real street of Dublin. These are real people. Um, this is like something that really happened to me, or like um, Moby Dick. You know, this is really how. You know, there's passages in it that are just about this is how you get a whale. Like, it's not yeah. a narrative, it's yeah. like how you get it's a whale. To, it's a how to. <laughs> it's a how to, but it's within the novel and it incorporates a lot of different um, kind of texts. And so, thinking of Ulysses as kind of an, you know, anatomy, um, it's, very, it's a form based on exact and exact knowledge. And so, when you were saying that there's so many male commentators on it, it's tended to be seen as like a male. Form, yeah. One based in exact knowledge and information, and uh, um, it's very self-referential. Mm -hmm. Like that's one of the aspects of an anatomy. Um, mm. Like this is not a natural form. You know, subject headings. You know, in different languages, and like it diverges yeah. into different po like poetry and anyway. And so um, I just thought that was really interesting. Yeah. That, the different kinds of uh, ways you can approach it, and that maybe we don't think about love in the novel. It's in Ulysses because we're so concerned with um, like this part right here, okay. where it becomes a play, oh. you know, and that's just really exciting. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was like you were saying before, Rachel, in the same vein, that uh, when you go into a different place, a different kind of place, then the language and mm -hmm. his ideas would all somehow fit and be adjusted to the, the, the location liked about the novel when I read it first and still like almost most about it was just when you read a fairly small passage like this, guys walking down the street doing his job and he, he's operating on so many different levels mm. he's, he's selling advertising but he's also dealing with imagery you know, postal bills the ballast office clock they're all setting off trains of thoughts as he's going along. So a whole lot of stuff is happening. It's very, again... Subtly, in a way. Well, it's very affirming, again, of people's humanity because mm -hmm. it makes you feel that everybody's so much more important than, you know, their job you, or the, mm -hmm. the mundane day-to-day yeah. -day things you saying. do to get through the day. <laughs> and it's also very fascinating to take a small passage that, that you read so nicely. And um, we all went off in different places, mm -hmm. which is what Leopold's yes. doing here. Yes, thank you. That's very fun thought.